Should use shotgun now.
I see you, champion. Sit. Those fang horns are parts I need to fix their override. Save many of my You said something about rewarding me? You don't have to. Regala had to be stopped. That battle was almost the end of me and my partner Sosek. During the fighting, I was surrounded by rebels just as I saw a machine about to strike him down. Then your bomb fell from the sky and he was saved. We all were. I can't properly repay you for what you did, but I can offer you something. You really don't need to. Honor is payment enough for any warrior, I know, but... Greenshine will buy more blades. 
I discovered a cache of it inside a cave on a mountain to the southwest of here, right at the edge of the desert. It's guarded by machines, but if you can fly in and bomb them as you did in the battle, you can claim the green shine for yourself. Hmm. I might give it a try. Do you want me to bring some back to you? No, no. It's for you. All of it. The least I can give you for saving Sosek's life. I only wish I could be there to see you swoop from the sky and claim it. Cash of Greenshine could come in handy. Sounds like a... Machines. Must be the spot Morala told me about. This bomb should come in handy. Gotta finish off those machines and pick up that green shine. Jeans, time to find that green shell.
There's the cash. I just need to get past these vines. Why does this feel too easy? I thought this was too easy. Uh -oh. This is gonna be tough. giving way. I should pick up that green shine now. I was nice of that knocked soldier to point me this way. I wasn't looking for thanks, but I'll take it. You, Outlander, come and trade. Where this Outlander walks. Greetings, Tabor. Your spear points the way to Remember the text. I don't if care what you say. If we honor, then we must do so in battle. Were you discussing me? Keta, apologize. I think you offended our guest. No offense intended. We were debating whether you or Farika were the first to fly in the wings of the Ten. Farika? She fought a stormbird and it lifted her into the air. Sounds like flying to me. You're talking about her like she's no longer around. She's not. After she grabbed onto the machine, it flew off with her to that mountaintop. The stormbird still circles the peak, but we never saw Farika again. That's sad. What a way to go. I'll say. If you find yourself flying on the wings of the Ten again, search the mountain. She was a great soldier with armor to match, and it serves no one lying up there. I'll think about it. Were her feet off the ground? I could jump off a cliff. My feet wouldn't be on the ground. Walk with me. Smoke on shiny my boots. This is the mountain made out to lock the rest of the stormboard. I think. 
Marika's armor should be around here somewhere. Getting down now. A fragment of Farika's armor. There must be more. I don't like the sound of that. Must be the Stormbird that killed Farika. the slumber. I might have a scrap of Farika's armor. One more bit of armor lodged in the machine. Can my focus see anything? Check what my focus sees, maybe. Another armor fragment. Maybe my focus can help here.
secret ingredient for someone, I'll bet. Looks like another bit of armor. I guess that's it then. I should let the block know and recover this left of Farika's kit. Try to ride on a sunwing? We saw you fly. Did you find Farika? I was able to retrieve her armor. What's left of it anyway? She didn't stand a chance against that stormbird. Ah, uh, I see. A painful end. But not without glory. So, what do you think? Was she the first to fly on the wings of the Ten? She was brave. And spent a fair amount of time in the air. I'd say what she did qualifies. She flew! I knew it. The first to fly. As her successor, you should keep her armor. You can fix it up at the workbench. This way. Once you repair the armor, you're welcome to it. You take after Farika. Bold, brave, and a diplomatic liar. She met a harsh fate. Let her have the title. Fair enough. It's kind of you to show such humility. You, Outlander. Come and trade. He's not made a straw.
That look. It's time to change it. Right. In this Looking savior back. movie. Ah. Come to revel in some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by. I. Mm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. All right, let's start off simple. The Tanakhs like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces, each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round. So go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close. When performing an attack, you'll be ta A machine's combat power is a combination and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And so in total, your machine's combat power equals two. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just so right now, the difference, this means your, did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. 
That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try... That's about it for your turn then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you put some time. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor, though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. You know, I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping. Oh, no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. Ah! I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machines. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. 
Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, choosing the right terrain doesn't just improve your offense. It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's standing on grassland terrain. This terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position. But they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now, the front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it. Which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. Ha, <laughs> see? When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you. All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do, so be wary. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left. See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemies so you're not completely helpless. Well. I think that's enough yammering for me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players will choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. 
Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, its machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gut. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram-type machine. Attack an enemy with it, and it'll push the piece backwards. Like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board. This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Now this is a beauty of a piece, a dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece. A nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set. If you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and we haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. Good luck. Time to get serious. That's it for me. sure dampens the forge. Your move, Red. Where it goes. 
You got me. Fair and square. You know where to find me, Red. Play some machine strike. I got all my machine pieces accounted for. Good luck. Your turn. Oh, that's my cue. Off the board you go, buddy. Machine down! One down. Hmm. Got 
gotta think this through. Let's get that piece out of there. There it goes. You lost, but don't let that stop you from trying again. Here we go. My turn. Kinda wish I'd thought that through. You moving my pieces. I see how it is. Time for me to step up. What'll it be? Nice move. Guess I'll have to come up with another plan. Okay, I can do this. I'm done. Off the board you go, buddy. Time for me to step up. It's all you. You hit armor. I thought I was in trouble there for a moment. Always a risk, overcharging. Let's get that piece out of there. Your time to shine, friend. And there it goes. I gotta think this through. Well played, friend. Enjoy your victory. I look forward to our next game. Over here. 
Come on, then. No one's up... I should take one more look around before I go. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. Patris! You're back! Aloy! You managed to get those parts I asked for? I'm working on it. Didn't find what you were looking for, I guess? Shellwalkers use this passage regularly, and Laren wants their plating. I just need to wait them out at his camp. Convoy, it's here. Lauren's contract said they'd set up traps along the passage. Might as well use them. Hmm. I can override burrowers now. I should salvage what I can and leave the plating for Laren's crew. Huntress! You're back! I took down that shell walker for you. Vonda! Rendor! We got a pickup! Per our contract, here's your payment. This will definitely help me make some great armor. But? Well, I realized an armor made out of shell walker plating's good. 
but with just a few minor additions, it could be so much better if you'd be willing to take on a few more contracts. What do you say? What else do you need for your armor? Alarm antennas? Strong? Supple? I could use them to make my armor more flexible? We picked out a herd of scroungers already. I'll, uh, read through the contract. See what I can do. Best of luck! Tell me more about these contracts of yours. I was thinking, scrabber jaws are powerful. I could use them to strengthen my armor. Crew spotted a pack of them not far from here, primed for salvage. I guess I can give the contract a look. Fantastic. I should get going. I'll be waiting for that salvage. I know I can make the perfect armor. I just need the right parts. Must be close to the machine site Ryan's contract mentioned. I should read it in my time, just in case. Scroungers, just like Lauren said. I need their antennas. If I shoot them off without getting spotted, everything should go smoothly. One antenna here. Antennas back to Larent when I get a chance. Huntress. Got the alarm antennas you asked for. Ah, perfect. These will do. As promised, here's your payment. Maybe now you'll consider taking my other contract. Should be easy enough for a skilled hunter like yourself. I should get going. Be careful out there. 
The charger heard Laren's contract mentioned should be close by. Might want to look through the contract one more time. Make sure I didn't miss anything. There are the chargers. If I can take a few of them down, it should lure in the scrap. I think that metal tower is giving off the signal. I can head over there, check it out. Still gotta hunt down those scrappers for Laren. Get those scrapper jaws for Larand. Time to take these parts back to Larand. Oh! Perfect timing, Huntress. Got all the parts you wanted. I see your reputation as a hunter is well earned. Here's your payment. Looks like you've got everything you need to make your armor now. Actually, our scouts spotted a fanghorn nearby? It spews fire like a blazing forge. If I had it, my armor could resist an inferno. What do you think? I'll check the details later, see if I can track it down. You won't regret it! I should get going. Good luck finding that fanghorn. These are the last parts we'll need, Huntress. I should take a quick look at Lynn's contract. Read all the details. I see machine tracks. Might be the Fanghorn I'm looking for. There's a lot of different machine tracks here. I'm gonna need my focus to tell them apart. Found the Fanghorn tracks. The trail looks fresh, too. My focus should help me follow it. There you are. Let's see where you lead. A 
same horn that breathes fire. I think I found Laren's new friend. I'm gonna have to take it down. Can just stay still for me, huh? I'll catch you eventually! of Lance Horns. Ha! Gotcha! Whew. Now I need to get those parts for Laren's. Here's that fanghorn you wanted. Most of it, anyway. Yes! This is it! This will make my armor truly stand out. Unless... maybe I can add... Uh... It's about time you got started, isn't it? You're right! Can't make the perfect armor if I never light the forge. Thank you, Aloy. Maybe you'll come back around when Karuf does. See me win that prize? I can try. Salvage to sell, Huntress? Need something, friend? Good luck. You wish to practice your hunting skills, Savior? 